Well, it is a beautiful Blue Ridge sunrise right now, and this is the perfect day for a cup of coffee. And to talk about one of the most frequently asked questions that I get. That is, which hammer should I use? Let's get started. Okay, right off the top, there is not a clear answer. I can't tell you which hammer to use. This is something that you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. My strong advice is if you're just starting out, use the hammer that you have. I've had some students before that have come to a lesson, they've only been playing for a few months and they literally have 20 pair of hammers and they say, Josh, help me figure out what, what's best for my style and what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, You've only been playing for a little while. You don't know what you're trying to do yet. Uh, so really use the hammer that came with your instrument and maybe just get two, maybe even three different pairs to try out some different things and try to find what you like. So there's a lot of different things that go into the, into the design of a hammer. What I want is something that sounds good and is comfortable. And there's a lot of things that affect that, but one thing that's often overlooked when it comes to your tone quality is your instrument. You can have one pair of hammers on an instrument and you think, man, this sounds great. Then you jump over to a different hammer dulcimer that has a different voice and you try them there and it doesn't sound as good. So you need to think about pairing the right hammers with your instrument. Also, what can affect the tone quality is your technique. You can have five hammer dulcimer players, all with the same exact hammers on the same exact instrument, and all of them will sound different. So how you play influences the way that you sound. Also, when it comes to comfort, uh, this is really important, and I can't tell you what is comfortable because your hands are different than mine and your technique may be a little bit different as mine as well. So you have to discover what's comfortable for you. I literally just heard somebody think, Joshua, what hammer do you use? Well, hey, I am glad that you asked. I use right here this Joshua Messick hammer uh, designed for me by Masterworks. I absolutely love the way that it feels and uh, the way that it sounds, it's the right fit for my style. If you would like these hammers, you can buy them by clicking on the link in the description and you will also help support this channel. Now back to the show. What are the materials that the hammers are made out of? Well, primarily they're made out of wood. That is the most common material. You will also see carbon fiber or even aluminum. And these different materials will change the way that they sound, but they're different sounds. One is not necessarily better, they're different. I would say, in my opinion, the most versatile general purpose material is wood. Also, the striking surface can vary. You can use cotton or felt, leather, uh, or anything that is soft. I mean, really, that'll help to produce a more softer, mellow sound. If you wanna get a little harder, you can start experimenting with metal or plastic or really anything that's a hard surface and that'll create a brighter sound. You wanna be careful when it comes to brighter sounds because it can get too harsh and too cutting. Uh, one thing that my buddy Stephen Humphrey showed me is he uses moleskin on the wood side of his hammer and that will help to soften the sound just a little bit but preserve that brightness and uh, sound that's very attractive. There's three different types of hammers. The first is a single-sided hammer. Literally, there's only one striking uh, side that you play with. That's called a single-sided hammer. Then there is a double-sided hammer. A double-sided hammer is meant to be played on two sides. You can see right here, you've got one side which is wood, you flip the hammer over, and it's got a type of leather on this side 
for that softer sound. This is more versatile, and this is the type of hammer that I use. Next up, uh, we have what I would call special effect or special hammers. Uh, there's three types that I've seen, and I don't have any of these, so I'm sorry I can't show you. I'll put a picture up on the screen. The first type is uh, a hammer that has a pick on the end, and that pick allows you to literally pluck the dulcimer with a type of a guitar pick. The next type is a double-sided hammer that allows you to play vertical thirds or fourths. I don't use these because I have different techniques that I use for playing intervals and block chords, and I just don't find that I really need them. Another type is a type of a Y design that allows you to play intervals such as fifths or fourths or sixths or tritones. So those are really nice, but once again, I don't use them because I found that I have a hold that I use with the hammers that I like that allows me to get that vertical grip this way and I can play just fine uh, with these. Hello, <laughs> let me interrupt here real briefly because I know some of you are thinking, Joshua, please just tell me, which hammer should I buy? Well, hey, tell you what, I'll help you out. I've included some recommendations for some different hammers that I think you should sample in the links below. Also, you're probably thinking, okay, Joshua, can you please just make some audio recordings and let me hear these differences that you're talking about? Well, I'll show you in just a little bit some of the differences, but I wanna say this. It is really hard to demonstrate the differences in hammers over YouTube. One of the reasons is you're not playing it. And I've already said that your technique influences the sound. Also, you're not playing my dulcimer. So it's gonna sound different when you play it on your instrument. Also, the recording quality on YouTube, you're streaming compressed audio, and you're probably listening to this on your phone. That is not the right space to make an intelligent decision. You really need to try out these hammers on your own, on your dulcimer. So let's go to the studio and let you hear some of the bigger macro differences that you will be able to hear on YouTube. I am going to start with what I would consider to be the softest, most mellow sound all the way up to the brightest sound. So this hammer here with this uh, pad is the most mellow. One step up would be the padded side of this hammer. And now the padded side of this hammer is a little brighter. A step brighter would be moleskin. And then the brightest sound would be the wood side. I'm just curious, which sound did you like the best? Please let me know in the comments below. Now there's one other element that's super duper duper important and that is the weight of the hammer. You don't want it too heavy because that will knock your instrument out of tune. The weight of hammer that I find that I like is about 12 grams. 14 grams is fine. 16 grams is, to me, kind of the threshold of weight. You start getting over 16 grams, and I really think you run the risk of knocking your instrument out of tune, and you don't want to do that at all. Uh, now let's talk about the different designs of hammers that we have, and this is where it really comes down to preference of what do you like. Here's one right here made by Bob Bedard. Uh, this is a very well-respected uh, mallet. A lot of players love them. And actually, uh, when I was on Mary and the Witch's Flower, Hiramaso Yanabashi watched one of my videos where I was using this hammer, and he used that as a template to, to design the magic wand of the character Flanagan. Uh, it's kind of a cameo appearance. Whenever uh, Flanagan says onward, he pulls out his magic wand, and briefly you see it is literally this hammer right here, a Bob Bedard hammer as his magic wand. 
kind of cool. Here's a picture of me with director Hiramasa Yonabashi uh, showing our Bob Bedard hammers doing the Flanagan onward stance. Uh, really special memory right there. This right here is another type of hammer that is uh, used, it's very broad. I used to use these, uh, they're a great hammer. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them. It's just not what I use today. Uh, also, here's a hammer right here that has a special story. There have been three times in my life that I have forgot my hammers to a gig. The first time I was about 10 or 11, and I had to play with pencils. <laughs> the second time I was 14, I was in Thailand, and I played the concert with chopsticks. The third time is a little less forgiving. I was an adult. <laughs> and uh, I was at a concert, it was a church concert, and I forgot my hammers. And I told the music minister, I need something. I need a striking mallet of some type. What can we find? And he says, oh, that's easy. There's a guy in this church that builds them for fun. I was like, you're kidding. He's like, no, I'll just call him up and he'll bring you some. Sure enough, he brought me this hammer right here. This is a homemade hammer and I've kept it because it's just a special memory that, hey, sometimes things really do work out and it really is okay. Real quick, frequent questions and some of my tips. People ask me, should you use different hammers for different songs? My answer to that is absolutely. If you have a pair of hammers that sounds great with one song and a pair of hammers that sounds uh, great with a different song and you want to mix it up, I say do that. Now, when I'm playing concerts, I don't typically do that. I don't like to have to bring a whole bunch of different hammers and I don't like to have to remember which hammers I'm using for what song. I find that confusing and, and really I start thinking in my head and that just, that just ruins the performance for me, but you may be different. Uh, if you want to use different hammers, I say absolutely do that. That's a great thing. When you're just starting out, you may find that the grip is very slippery. Uh, that's common, and I trust me, the more you play, it'll just not be slippery anymore. You'll get used to it. But an easy solution to that is just put some beeswax right here on the grip, and that'll help you hold it better. Another thing you can use is like violin rosin. That works really well to help you grip. If you're playing outside, one thing to think about is wind. And I have spent hundreds of hours playing outside. One thing I've learned is that you need to have the aerodynamic, wind-resistant uh, hammer. And what I've learned is that a hammer that has a bigger hole in the middle really does help it from being blown around. It's not like a, a sail, you know, out there playing it really helps it have a little bit more wind resistance. Also, a heavier hammer can help a little bit. It's just not as volatile to the wind. Question for the day is, what kind of innovation would you like to see in hammer design? How could they be made better? What could we do? Let me know in the comments below and I'll use those and hey, maybe use some of your suggestions to help design a brand new hammer. Also, just food for thought, how about a 3D printed hammer? Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe somebody could try that. Please send me one, I'd love to see it and try it out. Thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, comment. Until next time, I'm Joshua Messick. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.